Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Steps Basic, and welcome back to my community show, yeah. Get a little jazz in there, a little big band stuff, go make it sound real cool. But anyway, that's not what's important. What's important is, first of all, announcements. I attempted to, or I've got the PlayStation Remote Play app now on my computer, which allowed me to live stream by using OBS rather than the PlayStation Network's live stream stuff. And one problem came up where I couldn't find the live stream after I live streamed it. I know it's still there because I can access it on my, uh, my, um, I can access it on my other account and watch it, uh, but I can't edit it, which kind of sucks. <laughs> But I think I have a way I can figure out how to make it. But I, I can't I can't put it in any folders or anything, but I think I can find a way to do that. Problem is I need to figure out how to not make it disappear after I'm done editing it or done recording it, live streaming it. You know what I mean. But that's a good thing. That means I could probably get back into live streaming because it's it was a pretty steady live stream and I was pretty excited about that. It was showing uh, data loss or, or frame dropping uh, every two minutes, but... When I watched it back, I didn't notice anything wrong with it. So that was good. Uh, that means I could probably get back into live streaming. Thank goodness I love live streaming. Um, and I might be able to finish out the Spyro series that way, which is what I was kind of hoping for because, you know, I started it as a live stream event. And I want to finish it as a live stream event, even though I still got another game to go with it. I have the Year of the Dragon. And uh, it's a bit of a slow-going process, you know. Uh, apart from that... Uh, Babbling Beards is doing good, um, except for the recording problem. We tried to record it recently and it failed, but we're going to try to record it again, uh, next week, but that's not going to affect the next upload for it because we got the next upload already ready to go and I just need to edit it all together and that'll be fine. Um, apart from that, uh, that's all the announcements I have. New game coming at the end of the month. Uh, Friday next week, uh, I'm going to be getting a new game. Was it Friday? Yeah, it was Friday. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm hoping you guys are excited about it. And it's going to be days gone because I like me some zombie stuff. You know how I am. Uh, but, yeah, no more announcements. So, let's get to the topic of the day. Today's topic is relaxation, meditation, hitting the zen button, gaming, as a relaxation art. Now, this is one of those topics that I always talk about when I, whenever anyone brings up, why do you like video games? One of the first things I say is, it's relaxing. Now, this, of course, will come in different ways to different people. Uh, now, to me, relaxing games aren't so much the multiplayer, you know, get it in, shoot them up type of games. I can't relax with that, but I do know other people, my brother, to name one, who actually finds that so much more therapeutic to get in and just start shooting stuff. You know, it, it's it's less relaxation, more catharsis than anything for me, but I can understand how that works. Like, for me, I like mellow games, you know. I'll play, in order for me to relax, and I know it's going to sound funny if you watched any of my Final Fantasy stuff, um, but for me to relax... I'll get in and I'll just grind. I'll just level up my characters in an RPG. And that is a good way for me to relax and just unwind. And it helps, you know, to clear the mind. It, and it gives me something brain dead to work on. And, and while I'm doing that, I can do other things. I can write. I can uh, edit. I can do all sorts of things while I'm doing this. Now, naturally, I do also use it just to unwind with sometimes. Like Final Fantasy 1, I'll get in and I'll go into a place and I just do the mind mind numbing back and forth of getting caught in battles and fighting my way through and everything and it's just it's understandable. Now, of course, there are other ways that I I use video games to unwind. There are other games in particular. Uh, but funny enough, I don't like to try to relax with puzzle games. Puzzle games are the 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 enemy of relaxation for me. Even if it's an easy brain dead puzzle game, I always 
my brain always goes into like hyperactive mode when I'm playing those. Now, that's not me saying I am very smart or anything, although some people would say, but I'm not going to, it's not important. Um, I'm just saying that I always really put too much thought into puzzles and whatnot. And often to my own detriment, especially when it comes to the easy puzzles. Um, but also sometimes, you know, I'll see the I'll see the the hard ones and I'll just get stuck on things. I'm like, how am I supposed to do this? And I'll just give them rounded circles and whatnot. And it's funny enough, the the whole thing that brought this up was the release of a game called Islanders. And uh, I saw Jack Septicai playing. I saw somebody do a review on it, and uh, I'm like, that looks actually really cool. And then one of the things both people mentioned was that it was a very relaxing experience, and I'm like. They don't do puzzle games like I do puzzle games. I overthink things way too much when it comes to that. So I find it almost impossible to relax to games like that. <clears throat> don't get me wrong. I enjoy a good puzzle. And I really enjoy solving a good puzzle. The Witness being the only exception to this. And probably just because of overblown expectations. Uh, but I really, really enjoy myself a good puzzle game. I actually played one a little while back. It was uh, called The Swapper. Highly recommend it. Cheap on the store. If you if you if you're into a puzzle game, the Swapper is for you. Uh, but they were talking about how that was relaxing, and there was one aspect to the Islanders that um, I saw as relaxing, and that was the music. Music is a thing that can that, that can soothe the soul, you know, relax the mind, calm the body, and everything. And I, the, you know, the whole uh, music soothes the savage beast sort of thing, and. Uh, I can agree with it on that, that the, the music in that game was blissful. And I understand, you know, some people some people relax with, with, with shooting games. Some people relax by grinding. Uh, other people do relax to puzzles. And funny enough, I say when it comes to video games, I don't relax to puzzles. But in my own time, I will play crossword puzzles, word searches, those type of puzzles... I will use those to kind of relax because more and more often than not, they're pretty brain dead for me. Again, not saying I'm smart, actually just saying that they're pretty dumb because if you do enough crosswords, you start to notice a lot of patterns in them and uh, they become fairly monotonous and repetitive and boring. And that's the best way to relax because what you need to do is find a way to switch your brain off. Ha. <sighs> Now, in other types of games that other people find to be relaxing, and I, I kind of can agree with it to a certain degree, but they're not the types of games that I really like, um, are things like uh, Abzu or Journey, where there is a story there somewhere, but it's like more just about the the journey, if you will. And, and I can kind of see those as being really relaxing, especially Journey. So I've been watching a little bit of it. Uh, never played it myself, but I've been watching some of it, and it, it's it's it, uh, magical world. Music is great, beautiful scenery and whatnot. But of course, this leads me back to the same thing: I can't relax if there's a mystery around. I can't relax if there's a puzzle to be solved. And a good deal of these games have puzzles in them. But also, you know, I start thinking, you know, how did this world come about? I think that's part of my writer, you know, the the whole writing aspect of everything. And I started thinking about how did this world happen? Where am I? Who am I? What am I in this world? And I just can't relax. <laughs> but I can kind of see the appeal to those games for relaxation. If you do your best to not overthink it, shut your brain down. Well, let me talk about that. You know, that's one thing that a lot of people seem to, 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 to kind of, I want to say, they view it as the same thing, relaxation and catharsis. To me, I don't really see them so much as the same thing. Like to relax to me is to do nothing or to do something brain dead. Uh, a catharsis to me is to release pent up stress. And relaxing doesn't mean releasing the stress versus so much as it means just calming yourself. That's why I, that's why shooting games aren't relaxing for me because when it comes to shooting games it's a catharsis i'm doing something i'm always active i'm always burning through something but puzzle games will never be a catharsis for me because like i said i overthink which means i end up getting stuck and getting frustrated 
because I've always built the puzzle up too much in my head. Of course, I should probably mention there are puzzles that I just downright do not get. And it's not just a matter of overthinking, but it's probably just a little bit above my brain level. <laughs> Before I sound a little toe pompous, because I know I have that habit of doing that. I just talk matter-of-factly and it comes out sounding that way. And that's not what I mean. Shut up. Hmm. Uh, so what kind of games do you guys like to play to cathart and or relax? Relax? Relax. <laughs> uh... I know there is one thing that I do like to do apart from the leveling up and grinding in, in RPG stuff is open world games. I will go sightseeing. I know that might not sound as weird as I think it sounds, but that sounds a little weird. I know, but especially in some of these larger, more beautiful open world games, sightseeing is fun and relaxing and you don't really have to accomplish anything assassin's creed is probably the one where i i like to sightsee the most because some of it's modeled after actual existing stuff like vienna and rome and whatnot modeled after actual rome and whatnot and it was kind of funny i know they're not really the same anymore but i've been to rome and it was a great trip i, I went there when i was in the military uh, we had four days in italy saw Cinevecchia and took the train to Rome and roamed around Rome, took the buses, the tour buses. It was a phenomenal, you know, it's just a sightseeing tour of the city. I love things like that because I'm, I'm very much an urban explorer. I'm just an explorer in general. I have that wanderlust stuff and seeing, seeing Rome there and then coming back and seeing Rome through Ezio's eyes in Assassin's Creed, was just really cool. And I didn't have to put any effort or any thought process into it. Just wandering around Rome, I'm like, hey, that's the Castel de San Angelo. I've been there. Uh, there's the Pantheon. I've been there. And there's the Vatican. I've been there. And there's the Colosseum. It was smaller than I expected. I was expecting it to be a lot bigger. But eh, you build these things up in your mind, right? That's actually kind of the one thing I'm looking forward to in uh, Days Gone is exploring and sightseeing in that game. I know there is the the aspect of monsters coming to eat your brains and whatnot, but I still feel like there's going to be an opportunity for me to explore around and see things and have fun and just unwind and occasionally cathart all over the zombies and whatnot. <laughs> uh, I think that's it. That's all I got for you today. I know it's a bit of a shorter one compared to some of my more recent ones, but I got stuff I got to do tomorrow. You know how it is, and I got to get ready for that. Ah, and hopefully it'll be, it'll all go smoothly and get it all taken care of and out of the way. But anyway, let me know in those comments down below what sort of cathartic releases and or relaxation games you guys like to engage in. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, I hope you did. Please go and poke that like button for me. If you'd like to see more from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I just flicked my table. And of course, as always, you're more than welcome to leave comments down in the comment section down below. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. How when I can, if I can. You know all that jazz. And tune in next time for another topic at another time. And until then, good night. Good night.